All right, now continuing on with this same problem, um, now it's asking us at what horizontal distance from the face of the cliff will the projectile strike the water? Okay, so just to kind of refresh our, our memories, let's kind of get a visual picture of what's going on here. We have our cliff and we have the water underneath it. This projectile is being fired off at 45 degrees to the horizontal, so it's going to be coming up here and then eventually gravity is going to take over and it's going to pull it back down again. So if we're looking at um, what horizontal distance from the face of the cliff will the projectile strike the water, we're looking at this point right here where this thing falls into the water. Well, keep in mind that we're going to be looking at this as an X and a Y axis system. So really, we're trying to find where this thing hits the X axis, or another way of saying it would be the X intercept. Well, what do we know about every single X intercept? For every X intercept, we know that the Y value is always zero, which makes sense here because our height is zero. So if we were going to plug this into our equation, that means that zero would equal negative 32 over 2500 x squared plus x plus 200. Now normally when we look at these quadratics we would have to factor um, in order to solve for x. This one is going to be a monster to try to factor out. So instead let's use our calculator and I'm going to show you how to uh, put the function in and to solve uh, on your calculator. So let's go over here. I went ahead and I put the function in to the y1 so you can see that. Now we do need to go ahead and set the window. Now our part of our directions um, in the next part say to graph the function for the x's between 0 and 200 so we're going to actually use that to our benefit. For the x's we're going to go from 0 to 200. Now for our y's we have to be kind of smart about those. If you'll remember back from what we've done already, we found that this thing had a maximum height of 219.53 feet. So we know we want to be up a little higher than that just so we can see this uh, curve very nicely. So what I'm going to do is I want to go up to about like say 250. In order to center this nicely on our graph, I'm going to go from negative 250 to 250 in the y direction. Now when I hit graph you'll see why I did that. Can you see now that my I can see like the cliff here and the projectile being fired off and then this x-axis then is the water. So I'm looking for this point right here where the projectile or where this function is crossing the x-axis. On your calculator, if you know a y value and you want to find an x value, we're going to go back into the y equals and in y2 we're going to type in that y value which in this case is 0. Now hit graph. By doing that, your calculator does not see the x and the y axis. That's for us, for us to be able to kind of orient ourselves as to what's going on um, on our calculator screen. If we want it to see the x-axis, we have to type in that y2 is 0. Now the calculator sees the curve and the y equals 0, or the x-axis. And now we can use an intersect feature, second trace, number 5 is intersect, and we can move our cursor to where we are right on top of that point of intersection and once we're there we hit enter three times for first curve, second curve, and then for guess. And it'll tell us now that those two things are meeting with, at an x value of 170.02. So that would be how far out from the base of the cliff we would be when the projectile hits the water.